All right. Uh, <laughs> what is your name and age? Uh, my name is Joe Camacho. Right now I'm 39 years old, soon to be 40. And Joe, where were you uh, born and raised? I was born, I was born and raised here, here in Los Angeles, California, um, and uh, uh, in a small community hospital. So yeah. And walk me through uh, your childhood. How did how did how did you make your way into MMA? Did it start at a young age, or was it something that came in later? In um, growing up, I've always been a fan of uh, Bruce Lee, Kung Fu Theater, and all the martial arts shows that you know we would watch as kids on Sundays. We'd go watch Bruce Lee at a, at a movie theater, and you know I'd be so amped up and you know kicking doors open as the movies and as as the show ends, you know just you know just so amped to you know go home and make my, my nunchucks out of the broomsticks, you know, and chain. So, yeah, so, you know, just growing up learning, you know, kung fu of, just from watching TV and then, then just picking up uh, uh, Taekwondo at the local Taekwondo school around the corner from my home. Now, did you do that for a long period of time? Did you stay in the Taekwondo? Um, I didn't stay in Taekwondo very long. I, I mean, I, I trained in Taekwondo, but I was also in sports, baseball, football, so I, that just kept me busy and it also kept me out of trouble growing up. Um, the local YMCA, the boys club, you know, my, my mother raised me, uh, she raised me as a, a single mother, so she, she knew what she, what she had to do to just keep me out of trouble. Like, again, I grew up in East Los Angeles, California, mm -hmm. a little rough area, but again, you know, I didn't have an older brother look look after me, I, I had older cousins, older uncles, and, uh, you know, just the sports was, was the, the answer for me to just kind of stay in line. Now, with the sports, how competitive were you? Were you, did you always want to win? Was it, was that a... I've always been an athlete that, you know, you, when I was young, they would call me hot dog because I was always a, the ball hog, the show off. Just, I've always been just a, a natural athlete, you know, just, I excelled very well in sports, you know, so, I mean, it, even from, from, from high school, you know, even college, people call it ball, football, baseball. So at what point you you and I were right around the same age? I think came into the sport about the same time. How did how did you find it? And let's, let's talk about where the sport was when when you found it. Uh, when I first saw uh, the UFC, which is back in 1993, uh, in the 90s it was the kickboxer era. You know, everybody was all into kickboxing. You know. Uh, uh, American Kickboxer had just come out, you know, um, um, with Blood Sport. So mm -hmm. I was a big fan of the Kickboxer. And then when, when UFC came in, 1993, they had all the disciplines competing against each other. And I was, I was rooting for the Kickboxer. I thought Patrick Smith was going to win it all because he was, you know, the, the awesome Kickboxer. And lo and behold, this little tiny little Brazilian guy, Royce Gracie, just comes out of nowhere and just starts wrestling guys. And at the time, we didn't know what it was. I was like, it's this, you know, I, I didn't know what wrestling or, or jujitsu was, so I was, I was kind of upset that this guy would want to take the guy down to the ground and try to finish the fight on the ground, but again, I was ignorant, I didn't know what it was, until after UFC 4, Hoist defeating Kimo, I was like, okay, you know, I think I gotta learn this stuff. So yeah, it was UFC, it was, it was pretty much the opening of the door for me. And how about, so what, what was it like going into the gym and... Maybe just talk a little bit about that era, um, what it was still called NHB, I think at the time, the whole part. Um, maybe talk about that ex that experience, uh, you know, getting in there and, and how it was for you. Well, um, at the time I was staying with my cousin, uh, Charlie Valencia. He's a, a, a UFC fighter, current UFC fighter and WEC fighter. And uh, uh, my cousin had, he was a, a CIF champion, wrestler, he wrestled for Fresno State. Uh, he also took, took judo. and. He took me to the local gym, uh, which was Larry Lannis' gym, which is uh, uh, it's a, a, at the time a submission factory. He still has a submission factory, but he was he was teaching a submission factory um, out of uh, the, the YMCA at the, at the local um, um, uh, at a local junior high school. They had a YMCA there, and uh, you know I went with Charlie, and, and he taught me uh, what wrestling was about and judo, and kind of introduced me to the game, mm -hmm. and and being that. I was a fan of Bruce Lee and you know Taekwondo and all that stuff. I I thought I would I would you know fare well against some of these wrestlers because I thought you know they would just want to take me down and just hug me to death. But that introduced me to the world of submission, so it was pretty fun. Now, what was it like uh, getting in there and fighting? Like, how did you, how did your mom feel about it? How, were, what did what did friends uh, say about you fighting? Well, uh, 
before when I would see the UFC, I was like, I would say to myself, man, these guys are crazy fighting bare knuckle, no rules. Like, I, I could never see myself doing that, you know. But when I when I first picked up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was uh, back in 1996. I, I trained in Rancho Cucamonga under Pedro Carvalho, and I got my uh, my my blue belt and. And I excelled well in sports. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I did very well in all the tournaments. So he had asked me, do you want to fight? There's this local show, Terry, Terry Trebocock was, oh, I'm sorry, this was before, before Terry Trebocock show, which was King of the Cage. I fought at the uh, Pomona Fairgrounds. Um, it was called the uh, Extreme Challenge, and it was a, a, a no holes barred type of event. And he asked me, you know, if I wanted to compete. And I, I when an instructor asks you to do something, then kind of have to respect the instructor or, and he also when he asks you you kind of got to think well he's asking you for a reason he could have asked any other student but he asked me so he must think that I'm good enough to uh, uh, defend myself or represent the school so at the time it was about representation mm -hmm. I wanted to put our school on the map so you know I, I said okay I'll do it and I, I did it for it was free and all it was was for bragging rights you know and, and, and fortunately for me I, I, I won those three fights it was, it was an eight-man tournament and I went by all the knockout. Wow. And I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. <laughs> so I tell you, you were hooked after that? After that, I was hooked. But, yeah, it was... The big show, the cage, was kind of intimidating for me. Uh, uh, Terry Trebocock, it was, he's, he's a promoter of King of the Cage. Before it was called King of the Cage, it was, his very first show was called the Inland Empire Classic. And uh, he, had, he had contacted Pedro and asked Pedro Carvalho if if you had any students that would be willing to fight. And again, Pedro asked me, and, and he said this time it would be for $200. So I said, hey, $200, you know, cool. So I fought, I fought in this show. I, again, I was, it was gonna be in the cage. Unfortunately, they didn't have the cage done on time, so they had to bring in a ring. It was Larry Lannis' ring. Mm -hmm. I fought in the ring, I fought against uh, Joe Stevenson. He was 16, 17 years old at the time. And this was the first time I fought in front of uh, 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 cameras and you know being interviewed and you know, it was a live show with just all the attention was on me um, and I was you know pretty much nervous but at the same time I saw all like Jean LaBelle and I saw Gokor I saw all these names and I'm like wow like I was in awe still yeah so yeah that pretty much that fight although I lost it made me want to wanted to come back and do better mm -hmm. and I and immediately I wanted to rematch with Joe Stevenson but my coach said just calm down there'll be more to come um, what are, let's see, Let, let's talk about how, uh, what, what you and I talked off the record earlier, um, it, go ahead and walk us through how, how you've seen MMA kind of change from, from those early stages, because you've been in it this whole time, so I, I'd like to hear what your impression of it is. Well, at the time, it was about style versus style, disciplines, you know, it was jujitsu versus the kickboxer. It was, you know, the Taekwondo versus the wrestler. So back then it was about style, it was a, a, about representation, representing your art, your school. It wasn't really about money, because it was underground at the time. It was, it was, uh, uh, UFC was, was, was uh, an underground sport. It wasn't even a sport, it was just a circus sideshow, what many people would, would call it. Um, but it was something that they did in Brazil, Vale Tudo, that was, that was no holes barred to them, you know, that was, uh, any, anything goes, Vale, vale Todo is, is, means anything goes in Spanish, uh, but it's Vale Tudo in, in Portuguese, uh, and, and that's, that was the way of life in Brazil, so that's what I kind of, that was, in, that was taught to me by my instructor, so again, um, at the time it was, again, about representation and, and, and just, you know, going out there and, 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 and holding it down for our school. And as, as um, it wasn't even a career, but at the time it, it was just, you know, fight per fight. It was just fighting, rep representing the school. And, and, and it, it wasn't, I, I had no, I didn't even imagine it being a career for me. You know, it was just a sport. Yeah, I'm gonna go and fight it. I'm gonna go fight next week. And, you know, selling the tickets, and we were, we had to hustle for our tickets and whatnot. You know, we had to really go door to door and tell our friends, and you know, all that is 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 we had to put in all the work. You know, we you know, um, you know, we, we, we were going to the, the you know the bars, wherever wherever we could, just to, to hustle these tickets, just to 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 promote the sport, promote who we are, what we're about. Um, it was about 
just kind of educating the masses in the beginning. We were, we were, we were trying to pave the way, not knowing we were paving the way for, for mm -hmm. up these up and coming fighters where we're at today. Um, uh, we were fighting when it was an underground sport before it was sanctioned in, 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 in the U.S. or California at the time. Um, um, you know, we, we, we were just doing it for the fun of it. And then uh, when Sure Dog came in in 1999, uh, Sure Dog uh, started to document all the, the, the records. And, 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 and now everyone was like, okay, we need to get in the show. Because we, uh, uh, you gotta, we, we had to have a, a polished record. See, back then we weren't fighting for records. We weren't fighting for, you know, for to have a six and old record. We were just fighting just to fight. You know, there was there was no record then. You know, so you know, sure dog comes in and starts documenting his fights. So now, now the coaches are starting to pick fights. Now they're trying to feed fighters, and uh, uh, you know, you have some fighters that are mis mis mismatched. You know, tomato fighters that are fighting tomato cans to to make it to the big show and. I didn't like that. I don't, I don't really think that's challenging yourself. You know what I'm saying? So, um, when I was fighting for King of the Cage, we we're fighting at the Indian Reservation. The Indian Reservation was sovereign land, so that was the, the the loophole in the system. We couldn't fight in in California under a a, 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 a sanctioned um, um, committee. So Terry Trebilcock calls the Indian Reservation. They let us put a show there, and we're fighting in sovereign land. So untouched territory, you know, so we were just fighting with, uh, sometimes we would fight with no medic on hand, you know, sometimes we would fight fighters right out of the bleachers, you know, someone, sometimes fighters couldn't make it, so they'll ask, they'll ask a fan, hey, you want to fight? Sure, just step, step on up, you know, so we are you know, it was about fun and humility, being humble, respecting your opponent, uh, uh, you know, you fight, after the fight, you hang out with your, your, your opponent and just... You know, it becomes a, a, a just a, a, a friendly network of, of you know of fighters. You know, and, you know. I mean, I could go on and on. I don't, I don't want to ramble, but yeah, it's, you know, in the beginning, it was just about you know, having fun, rep representing. Now, how much do you think um, motives have changed now that it's on TV? I mean, you have young kids that are watching these guys that are now superstars. You know, it's, it's commonplace. It's on Fox. It's on Spike and everything else. How much has that changed people coming in saying, "Yeah, I want to be a fighter." Right? When we when we started, guys, like they might do it, you know, just for fun or, or whatever else, just to try it. But now, do you see a lot more guys that are doing it for the money because they want the fame that they have? Well, it, it's a little bit of everything. A lot of a lot of what helped MMA is the Ultimate Fighter. You know, they they, they took a, UFC took a risk in in producing. A reality show, The Ultimate Fighter, and they wanted to see how, what kind of a draw it, 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 it would it would uh, it would bring to the to the to the table. Uh, fortunately for the UFC, The Ultimate Fighter did very well, uh, and when, after The Ultimate Fighter blew up, then the, the UFC started going commercial, getting uh, corporate sponsors, you know, for for sponsorships, and you know they. they they were trying to put on as many shows as they could and, and, and getting uh, new, fresh talent into the UFC, going through the Ultimate Fighter. Um, uh, now, so they, they opened up doors for, for a lot of people, going through uh, um, those avenues, you know, the Ultimate Fighter. You, you have to qualify to, to, to even get in the house. You know, bef I remember uh, auditioning for the very first 155 pound weight class for the, in the Ultimate Fighter. It was uh, the Joe Stevenson um, show. Uh, all it was was uh, uh, an interview. We didn't even have to audition. Now they're auditioning guys. We just we were interviewed. You know, I was interviewed, and um, you know, unfortunately, I was I was boring. I didn't I would I didn't have some type of drama or something. I didn't have pink hair or something. You know, uh, I was just bland. They asked me questions. I answered. Hey, I'm a fighter. Yeah, this is what I love to do. That's it. You know. Um, so I thought, okay, you know, if I'm going to get in the UFC, you know, I, I gotta, you know, you know, go through the Ultimate Fighter, you know. So because before the Ultimate Fighter, they were they were going through your record, you know, you had to have a six and old polished record. If you have a, a, a clean record, then you could get into the UFC. You know, I, I was slotted to be in the UFC back in 2004, uh, 
that was when uh, Jens Pulver, I believe, was champion, and there was no consistency with the weight with, with that with that weight class, so they were going to drop the 155 pound weight class. Mm -hmm. And Joe Silva said, "You know what? At the time, Joe, we're, we're not taking any fighters now because there's no consistency with with, with that weight class, so they were going to drop it." Um, so. Because of that, I, my 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 dream of becoming a, in in the UFC kind of kind of you know faded away, and then that's when the Ultimate Fighter came in, then that gave us a chance to give us another shot. Um, a lot of a lot of fighters now, because of so so many uh, uh, UFC fights that are being aired, a lot of a lot of these fighters they they're I think. They're being programmed, you know. You if you're watching, let's say you're watching a Nike commercial every day. What does that want make you do? You want to buy Nikes. It's, it must be, it must be, you know, badass. So a lot of these fighters are seeing UFC fighters just being superstar overnight. So you know, these guys, they say, you know what, I can fight. You know, I I, I think I can do it. So some of them, they, you know, they, they want to you know jump in the gym and then right away become a fighter. It's not that easy. You got to put in your dues, pay your dues first, put your time on the mat, pay your dues, start it. Tournaments, uh, smokers, and then and then and then maybe even go to Mexico and fight, you know, and then from there, go ahead and you know fight in the show. But again, it's not about logos and you know you know tattoos. That's not what UFC is about or or, M or MMA. Period. It's about you know being an athlete, professional, being being able to uh, uh, represent yourself as a, as a true professional. With um, with your fighting. At what point did it change from just being fun, or maybe I mean maybe it still is just fun for you? I mean, is did it did it transfer over to okay now it's a business and now I got to treat it like this? Did you have to? Did you ever make that step, or do you still just compete just because you enjoy competing? Well, I still compete. You know, like I'm I, I'm 39. I have a, a couple of fights left in me, but uh, in the beginning it was like it was about fun, so we didn't care about our record, and now they're going by records, so. Um, now they're they're picking guys who again who are six and zero, seven and zero. So those are I call them paper fighters, looking good on paper. But when they get in the big show, they, they lose against a, qual a, 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 a a quality fighter, and then you never hear from that guy ever again. You never see him again. Um, so I, that kind of bummed me out because I was one of the uh, pioneers of the sport. You know, I figured, hey, you know, let's give. I figured they would give me a, a shot because I'm one of the pioneers, and and and. and and they would still kind of want me involved in the sport somehow because of, of what I've done, mm -hmm. um, or whom whom I fought. I fought champions. You know, I didn't fight, you know, these tomato cans. I fought names. Mm -hmm. If you look at my, my record, yeah, my record is not a, a, a I don't have a, a ten fight winning streak. You know, my record right now is um, 50 50. I have 50 percent record, and and but all, every one on the on on the on the, on the sure dogs list, they're all names. You know, mm -hmm. so. You got to look at that too, you know. So it kind of bummed me out when you, you know, you got to go in. You have to have a clean record, or, or uh, in, if you don't have a personality, you can't get into the UFC Ultimate Fighter. You know, man, you know, I, when I when I, I had an audition with the Ultimate Fighter uh, back in two thousand and eight, it was in San Diego, and um, it was straight. It was just straight to the interviews with the producers, and that's one of the first things they asked me is, you know, what's your record? And I told them my record. They're like, "Oh, wow! You have your real, you're too experienced. We're looking for up and comers, you mm -hmm. know." So, so it kind of, you know, it was like I'm a double edged sword, you know. And so, it sucks, you know. So, I mean, but now I'm not even in it to fight for the UFC. I'm not even in it. I'm not even in it uh, for the money. I'm just not. I'm in it just because I love the sport, and I, and I continue fighting because I'm an instructor. I teach, and I want to. If I'm gonna, if, if I'm gonna send my fighters out to battle. Well, I got to be in the battle, in the, in the forefront, battling with them, you know, and I got to represent for them to let them know that, you know, hey, you know, I'm, you know, I'm here fighting along with you guys. How, how rewarding is it to be an instructor? Um, I mean, is it does it come close to matching the feeling of actually being in the cage yourself? It, it is, it is because um, well, it does. It's very rewarding. Uh, um, I, 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 I've taught guys who had zero talent, who had. Zero confidence in themselves. Who, who, who are troubled kids? I've taught guys who, who, I had to, I taught um, blind, had, had blind students that, 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 you know, they didn't have any technique. But, but being, being able to work with blind students, like seeing them tapping out all these 
uh, that student is, I mean, I see him evolve, seeing my students evolve, like, it's very rewarding because you see them, you're out there giving them all of your knowledge, you're giving them your, 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 uh, your, your art, you know, and they're out there playing your game, you know, it's something that you use, when you see your students competing and winning, you know, it, it's, it's very rewarding because, like, it's you out there, you know, it's, 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 that's like, it's like, a, it's me, I'm hand, passing the torch, you know, I'm, I'm handing out my torch and letting them represent for me and representing my name, you know, when they win, I win, when they win, they put Joe Camacho on the map, and, 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 and people come to my school, that's, that's credibility, you know, when you walk into my school, you would see trophies and medals and, and pictures of my fights, that's why we fight, we fight to have credibility so that when we do open up our school, we're not just some guy learning technique off of YouTube, you know? We're not YouTube fighters. This, this is real, we're the real deal. Mm -hmm. out, of, out of all the people that have come to you saying, yeah, I want to fight, um, how many do you think actually make it? Like, how, how many go on to, to actually go on and fight? Well, it's easy to get someone to fight. I can get them a fight the next day. It's, it, it, it takes a phone call, mm -hmm. but I'm about, um, I'm about keeping my reputation as 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 a, a res as a good instructor, and a good instructor uh, wouldn't just throw a guy out just for just to you know rep just promote my name. No, I don't do that. If I see a guy who has talent, no matter how much talent he has, he still has to pay his dues. He still has to put blood, sweat, and tears on the mat, just like us. You know, you're gonna grow. If you're gonna grow, you're gonna plant your roots first and then grow with all of us. You know, we're not gonna just feed you to the, the lions. You know, so you, it, I mean, there's, I have a, a few students that wanna fight and some, of, uh, some, some other instructors want, want my students to fight for them. And then my students are pretty humble. I mean, loyal to me, it's, and I'm really big on loyalty. And I see that and, and they tell them, you know, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm good where I'm at. That, that means that I'm doing, I'm doing a good job, you know. Yeah. Um, can you describe yourself as a bit, as a, as a person outside the gym, outside the cage? Who are you as a person? Like, what are some of your values? What, what's important to you? Who, what kind of person do you try to be? Well, um, I'm a humble person. First of all, I'm very humble and very passionate in, in whatever I do. Um, I've always said, if there was, if I, if I weren't fighting, I'd be doing uh, artwork. I'm an artist. I went to school, I have a degree in, in, in design. I mean, I have something to fall back on. And yet, I'm still in this sport ahead and I'm not working. You know, I could easily go back to uh, graphic design and go back to doing what I love to do. Mm -hmm. But since I love this sport so much and I love the people that I'm around, they make me a better person, you know. Um, uh, I don't know, I don't know how, to, how to describe it, but it's just, I, I feel like Someone like a father to some of my kids, some of my students, uh, or a big brother, a little brother, or even a, a, a good friend. It's it's about um, kind of like the Knights of the Round Table, a brotherhood. You know, when you, when you have that, you when you're out at a, at a, at, a, at an event or somewhere, you're out there representing not just yourself, but you're out there also representing them. So it's about you know representation. You know, um, um, being humble is very key for me. And, 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 like I don't like me being a fighter. I, I don't wear all the fight apparel. I don't need that attention. If you people that know the fight game, they they'll know a fighter when they see one. You know, I don't need to walk around with my chest out and bumping shoulders. You know, I've I've been I've been in, at at nightclubs several times where I've been you know che shoulder checked and I'm the one saying I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. You know, because you know what's what's that. You know, what's that going to do for you? You get in a fight at a, at a bar, what? It's only going to get you in trouble, you're going to get arrested, whatever, you know. So, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling just, just you know, being a, a, a mentor. I'm a mentor. I, 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 a lot of these kids look up to me, so I, I got to represent for them. You know, I, I, I got to be a good role model. You know, and, and one, someday I'm going to have my, 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 uh, my children, and I, you know, I got to, you know, Show them the way. Show them how how to grow up and, and be a good role model. Yeah. Okay. Um, what um, 
Oh, just skip one. Uh, what are, with everything you've done, what what are you most proud of in your life? Uh, what, what what would you say is your biggest accomplishment so far? Well, as a fighter, you always want to set your goal to become a champion. I've been a two-time champion. I've been a, a, a California Combat Champion, a, a King of the Cage Champion. You know, I've been cha I've been a, a, a Grappler's Quest Champion. I've been I've I've re reached um, some of the uh, uh, my goals as as being first place or a champion. I've reached that, but beyond that, um, I was able to meet a lot of people. Uh, being able to travel, you know, in, in my travels, I, I went to Japan several times, Guam, um, I, I, I've traveled up and down the United States, you know, because of fighting, you know, um, um, it's, 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 I don't know, it's, it's, the reward is, 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 it's, uh, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's very, uh, uh, how can I say, it's, it's, for me, I get really emotional, you know, when, when, when people come up to me, who, who want to just take take a photo with me or, or 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 get an autograph because it's like wow you know like I haven't I, I I've been in the sport for a very long time but yet people are still coming up to me and wanting to take pictures of me and sign their you know their magazine or whatever you know or it's 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 cool because like I feel like I've done something you know and sometimes we feel like you know, we go through our trials and tribulations in life, and we, sometimes we, we, we beat ourselves up because we kind of feel like a loser somehow because we're not where we wanted to be when we set our goals, you know, ten, five, five, ten years ago, and we feel like we're not where we should be, but we still kind of feel like, ah, oh, you know, like, we're not there yet, but it's those little things that, that keep us up, you know, like, people wanting to take photos with you and interviews, like this interview, like, wow, this is cool, you know, like, this is kind of like, it lifts me up a little bit, you know, like, okay, okay, I'm still in it, you know? You know, so this is pretty cool. Awesome, man, that's cool. Um, and last question, since you are around so many fighters, maybe you have some insight. Why, what do you think some of the reasons are for guys fighting, especially nowadays? Um, if you had to think of maybe like the last 10 guys you coached that were fighters, and you had to say why they were fighting, what would some of your answers be? Well, there, there could be many, there's many reasons why. Some people need the money. Some people want the stardom, the fame. Some people, some of the guys want, uh, they use fighting as a, as a therapeutic tool to release that anger they have inside them. You know, sometimes they, I mean, you, you never know, we got guys that, that have, they had like broken homes and they want to release their, their frustration in the gym, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they don't want to see that. There's a way to approach that, and, and you know, and how to how to keep them calm. You know, um, fighters fight because they, you know, sometimes we got guys that they've done every sport in the book, and and fighting is probably the next extreme sport that they want to try because they feel they can do well since they they've done very well in all these other sports. They they're you know, athletes want to compete. Period. When you're an athlete. You want to challenge yourself, you know, and and you wanna, uh, uh, you wanna be, you wanna be great at whatever it is you think challenges you, and if 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 fighting challenges you to become a, a, a champion, then you know a, an athlete will do whatever it takes to be that, you know. And last thing I just thought of it, how about your gym? What what kind of people do you want coming into you? Or, or do you only coach fighters, or do you bring in? Do you encourage everyone to come I used in? to coach only fighters back in the day, and then, and then um, not liking how fight how fighters are. I don't know. Not like not liking some of the attitude. You know, kind of kind of gave me a sour taste in in, in, in fighting. Um, I want to pick and choose the guys that I want to train. You know, um, if I can see if I see if they're humble, if they're good, if they they have a good head on their shoulders, then I'll, I'll okay. Then I could give them all my knowledge. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't own a school. I, I, I did. I did. I, I taught for Big John McCarthy. Um, I, I, I taught for his school several weeks for two years. I'm 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 currently the uh, uh, the head in, head MMA instructor at the UFC gym here in, in LA. Um, uh, and I've I've taught in several other schools. You know, and you know all I all I teach is now is is 
this, the hand-picked fighters that are in my little circle and, and some of my students that I, you know, that, that I know that they're going to do very well in. I give them all of my knowledge and, 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 I, and I see the direction they're headed and I see you know, how humble they are and that's what I like. You know, I, I, like, I like them to represent me as I would represent myself. Being, being level-headed, you know, it's it's very cool though when you hear um, when fighters travel and they go out of state or out, out of the you know out of town and they go train at other schools and when other instructors see their talent and they say, "Wow, you're pretty good." You know, who, who, who's your instructor? When they mention my name and they tell them, when, when they mention my name and they're like, "Oh yeah, oh cool, Joe. Yeah, we know Joe. Yeah, no wonder you're that good. Okay, oh. cool. That's rewarding. Like you know, that's them representing me. You know, yeah. so yeah." Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say about yourself, MMA, or why you like to fight? Um, well, I just got slotted to fight in, 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 uh, in January for Bellator. This would probably be my last run. Um, the, 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 the fight promoter, uh, I mean, the, ma the matchmaker gave us a call and said that uh, they'd like to have me in, in their Los Angeles show in January. and, and uh, Knowing that they can, that I can draw a, a pretty large group of fans, you know that's one of the reasons why they want me on the show. I think, and and also because um, um, I guess I'm an exciting fighter. But um, yeah, I'm going to be fighting for Bellator in January, so um, that would be this would be my first time cutting down to 45. So if I'm going to if I'm going to fight and, and and lay it all out on the mat, I'm going to cut down to 45 for the first time and and go out there fight, win, and possibly retire in Bellator and that's what I want. I want to retire on a good show and just walk off the mat with my head up and, and still staying involved in the sport, teaching and giving giving my knowledge to the up and coming talent. Awesome man. Well best of luck with that. Thank you very much well, for the interview.